I'm Joan Steffen. And I'm Kevin McGall. Up next on News 11, a frightening emergency landing at a local airport calls out fire and rescue. Tonight, we'll talk with the pilot of that plane. Also tonight, those controversial new city taxes, what we'll be paying for and how much. And from down under, smooth sailing for our guys in today's America's Cup action. News 11 is next. It's in your soil, a disease called Phytophthora that attacks your soybeans, cutting off their supply of nutrients at the roots. How can you fight what you can't see? Apply Ritamil at planting. Ritamil stops Phytophthora and Pythium damping off. The result? Healthier plants and better stands, yielding an average of five bushels more per acre. Unlock the potential of your soybeans with Ritamil. Tales of heartburn from Gaviscon antacid. Once a man ate all of Italy. Pasta with tomato sauce and garlic. In one night. And the garlic. <laughs> and discovered the only thing worse than daytime heartburn. Heartburn. Is nighttime heartburn. Fortunately, there was Gaviscon, specially formulated so it not only gives fast relief during the day, it even works at night when you're lying down. Gaviscon antacid. It even works lying down. Fastest growing television news. News 11. With Joan Steffen, Kevin McDowell, Randy Shaver on sports, and meteorologist Sally Patrick. Looks good. This was the scene at Crystal Airport this morning as police, fire, and rescue teams waited, tense and anxious. Up above, this is day. Organizers of last week's massive civil rights march in Forsyth County, Georgia, came back again this Sunday. This morning, it was a smaller, quieter stand for integration in that all-white community. About 75 people, including last week's march organizer, Hosea Williams, attended eight different churches and found an open but subdued welcome. The activists provided uh, with police uh, escorts between services. No incidents reported. Tonight, United Auto Workers voted overwhelmingly to accept a new contract with John Deere and Company. 22,000 Deere employees in six states, including Iowa and Minnesota, approved the company's offer, which allows for higher pay, improved pensions, and more job security. Now, this weekend, steelworkers in 22 states ratified that new contract with USX. Only Minnesota steelworkers voted no on that. Yesterday's agreement ended the longest work stoppage in that company's history. But as Duluth Bureau reporter Christy Arndt found out, workers on Minnesota's Iron Range aren't happy about it. 123 of Mintec's 1,300 union members will be laid off as a result of the new contract. Workers here say they don't know yet who will be cut out. They'll just have to wait to know when to go back to work and who will return. The contract settlement doesn't mean all the Mintac workers will be back on their jobs right away. There will have to be a gradual startup, and some of the steel workers here could be off their jobs for up to four more months. In Mountain Iron, Christy Arndt, News 11, the Duluth Bureau. The representatives of the union and the company plan to begin negotiations for callbacks tomorrow. A St. Paul Winter Carnival event met its end in Minneapolis tonight. The winners from the Jeep International 500 snowmobile race took their bows at St. Anthony, Maine after two days and 500 miles on snowmobiles. The winner in the Ontario to Minnesota race, Nolan Nakamusa Rozo, riding a Polaris. Yes, unofficially, of course. Yeah. Let's hear it for Nolan! And on Keller Lake in Maplewood, you can hear the whine of snowmobile engines and the terrified screams of local celebrities. This is the celebrity snowmobile race for the Winter Carnival. You'll recognize a couple of News 11 types in there, Kirsten Lindquist, and uh, rumor has it the man behind the patriotic Darth Vader mask there is Paul Douglas. I hear they had fun, but they did not win.
probably couldn't see out of that mask there. Yeah, no kidding. But who picked or it breathe. up? For, yeah. Still to come, the latest on the American hostage situation. And in the Philippines, a new challenge for Corazon Aquino. And on tonight's News 11 Extra, a local athlete is on his way to West Germany. His story when News 11 returns. You've heard about glasses fast, glasses right? At the Eyeworks, fast means just a few hours. And right starts right here, with a total eye exam from an Eyeworks doctor of optometry. And ultra fast service from our own lens lab. For the right look, choose from over 4,000 frames. Or choose from our contact lens center for a look that's all you. Get your glasses fast, glasses right. At the Eyeworks, the eye care superstore. Call for an exam or bring us your prescription. Hi, I'm Bob Keeshan, Captain Kangaroo. You know, in many ways, kids will always be the same, but times change. This era presents children and parents with an entirely new set of challenges. And that's why TV 11 is presenting, for kids' sake, a series of special programs and messages about issues that matter to you and yours. Sit down together with your children to watch, learn, and enjoy, for your sake, for kids' sake, right here on TV 11. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Feel it in a 350 V8 Chevy with the most available power of any half-ton pickup. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. The heartbeat of America. That's today's Chevy truck. This For Kids Sake message is brought to you by NSP. To all the people who share part of their lives with kids, who contribute their time, their wisdom, their inspiration, not only are you making kids' lives richer, you're enriching your whole community. To all you people who understand how important kids really are, thank you for kids' sake. Nearly two weeks and still no word tonight on the whereabouts of British hostage negotiator Terry Waite. This morning at his chapel in southern England, the Archbishop of Canterbury asked for prayers for Waite, but he said he had no news. He did, however, have Waite's instructions that he no rescue attempt be made, nor any ransom be paid for his release. He wouldn't want uh, money or people to be exchanged for him in that way. I think that he felt quite strongly that he had a particular character of mission that... Uh, if anyone was going to, you know, get him free, he'd do that himself. Waite was working for the Archbishop of Canterbury. Rumors persist tonight that Waite remains under house arrest at the hands of the Islamic terrorists, but those rumors have not yet been confirmed. More violence in the Mideast tonight, and that story tops datelines. A bomb on a bus wounded nine people, one seriously on the Mediterranean highway between Haifa and Tel Aviv in Israel. Tonight, not one, but several factions of the Palestinian Liberation Organization are claiming responsibility for that attack. Tonight in the Philippines, a crucial test of strength for President Corazon Aquino as voters go to the polls to approve or vote down that country's new constitution, which reduces the power of the president, bans the military from political activity, and would keep Mrs. Aquino in office for a six-year term. Early returns are not expected until tomorrow morning. And in Amsterdam today, it looked, uh, well, a little like Minnesota. Skaters were out on the frozen dikes, a lot of families with their kids. Some even tried new forms of skating that seemed to work. Even a hearty few tried a little bicycle on ice activity. One thing, though, uh, it may have looked like Minnesota, but today the temperature in Amsterdam was a nippy two below zero. We are oh, lucky. We were, we were close to 40, right? 39 degrees was the high. It was That's absolutely oh, gorgeous. The, the first whole day of, of February. And tomorrow is Groundhog's Day, right? You bet. You want to see shadows? It doesn't look like it will. It looks like no. it'll be cloudy. So it looks like at least uh, spring should be on the way. Spring is actually here. I don't care what the groundhog says. Mm -hmm. We had a gorgeous day. 39 degrees was the high. The low was 23. No snowfall. There's the sunrise and sunset for you. Clear skies right now. The current temperature is 28 degrees. No wind to speak of at this hour. And the dew point is 27. And the pressure is falling now as we have uh, low pressure approaching. Relative humidity is 96%.
We're going to take a look, and if you were out earlier and saw the moon, you noticed a bright sliver of the moon, but you also, if you were looking at it close enough, noticed a barely illuminated side of the moon, kind of glowing, kind of a bluish glow to it. What that is, it's called earth shine, and it's when the sun reflects off of the earth, light hits the earth, reflects back onto the moon, and that illuminates the dark side of the moon just a little bit, just enough to barely see it. If you were standing on the moon, it would be enough to cast a shadow. But of course, the brighter side of the moon being illuminated directly by the sun. It's really pretty. It should be that way for the next couple of nights. Tomorrow night, I think we might have enough break in the cloud cover where you can take a look at that again if you didn't see it tonight. It's really kind of nice. Right now, we do have clear skies. And as I said, a gorgeous day, a whole lot of sunshine continuing to melt what little snow we do have. Notice, though, clouds increasing quickly from the west. And that's a fast-moving storm system right now in northwestern sections of North Dakota, producing some plain old rain showers, not snow, but rain there, light rain showers. This storm will be zooming across northern Minnesota, and I think it will produce some snow, probably about a coating of one inch in the very northern section of the state. Central sections, I think maybe a little bit of freezing rain, freezing drizzle by tomorrow morning. It wouldn't be impossible to see that here in the Twin Cities, but I don't think it'll be any problem. Maybe a little bit of drizzle or freezing drizzle, but I think mainly just cloudy skies and mild temperatures. It's mild out there right now, 32 in Rochester, 48 degrees Pierce, South Dakota, and 56 down in Denver. This is the way the map will shape up for tomorrow. I think it'll be a fast-moving storm. It will clear out maybe some breaks late in the day towards the evening hours, but then another storm system will be coming through. This will give us snow here in the Twin Cities by Tuesday. We'll talk about that coming up in the 11 Weather Outlook. It's next. the 25-word essay. It all started when the San Francisco newspaper spoke disparagingly of Des Moines in an ad, and Des Moines got a little upset and offered the chance at a trip for someone from San Francisco with an open mind. Well, Elise was that someone. Not only did she get a whirlwind tour of the town, she got to meet ballet star Rudolf Nureyev and watch his Des Moines performance. It certainly was one of the reasons that made me want to come to Des Moines at the end of January. <laughs> And when it was all over, Elsie Rakluski headed back to the city by the bay with what she called wonderful memories. And with apologies to Tony Bennett, she said nothing about leaving her heart in Des Moines. In Des Moines, Iowa. Nope. I'm not going to touch that one. Up next, another reason Des Moines is looking more attractive these days, the new Minneapolis city taxes. We'll all be paying more starting tonight. That story when News 11 comes right back. This man is preparing the cure for the ultimate pizza emergency. Godfather's new stuffed pie pizza. And unlike the other guy's pizza, the one with the funny Italian name, you can have this one any way you want, any time you want, with six kinds of cheese. All you have to do is ask. Stuffed pie pizza! Godfather's new stuffed pie pizza. What are you waiting for? Picture yourself in Acapulco, the warmth of the sun, exciting nightlife, and more. Don't settle for second best. Twin City Tours now offers an unbelievable vacation deal on specially selected dates to Acapulco. You get round-trip air, seven nights at a beachfront hotel, and more from only $349. Call your travel agent now for Twin City Tours to Acapulco. Acapulco from $349, a non-retroactive special from Twin City Tours. Call your travel agent now. I was told when you ate carrots, your eyesight got better. These little orange things. I found a better way. Dueling Optical. They have style. Designer frames to contact lenses. Selection, quality, and affordability. Collection of frames and lenses for $49. Soft contacts for $34.50. So give the carrots to the rabbits and trust your eyes to Dueling Optical. Here's the great truck deal you've been waiting for. Right now, Nissan dealers are offering three fantastic ways to save big bucks on hard-body trucks. Get low 3.9% factory financing on any truck. Or get up to $800 cash back right to you. Plus, get our $630 special option package on e-model trucks at no extra cost. But don't wait. There will never be a better time to buy a hard-body truck than right now. See your Twin Cities area Nissan dealers today. Starting tonight, it's going to cost just a little bit more to eat, drink, and go to the movies in Minneapolis. New city sales taxes to pay for the city's proposed convention center are in effect, and that means all of us will pay extra. 
a one half percent sales tax on merchandise plus extra for food, drink, lodging, and entertainment in Minneapolis. So what seemed to have been a major controversy some weeks ago tonight appears to have been wet with the yawns of disinterest. News 11's Kara King went out today to find out about the new taxes and to get some reaction. The new Minneapolis sales tax took effect today. It was established to finance the new convention center slated to begin construction in May of this year. The additional tax is expected to bring in about $22 million in its first year, affecting us in the following ways. For example, an $8 record album will now cost you $8.52 at the checkout. That's an increase of $0.04. Cents. And here in Minneapolis, hotels and motels with more than 50 rooms will now charge an additional 2.5% sales tax. That raises the tax on a $50 room from $4.50 to $4.75. And finally, having dinner in your favorite downtown restaurant will cost you 3% more. An additional 75 cents will show up on a $25 tab. Today, we asked a table of restaurant goers how they felt about the increase. Of course, uh, taxes have to be paid, you know, to cover government expenses, but uh, they're, they're never a pleasant thing, you know, to, to pay extra taxes. And if the legislation has its way, Minnesota consumers will be paying extra at the gas pump soon. Dennis Stoffer has that story. When you buy gasoline in Minnesota, you pay more taxes on it than you would in all but a handful of states anywhere in the country. And it's possible that within a few months, you could be paying still more. Well, I think they've uh, got enough tax on gas the way it is. You know, I suppose if you got a small car, it won't make much difference, but I got a, I got a van and it burns the gas a lot faster. The reason for the hike, if one is passed by the legislature, will be a $225 million gap in the budget just proposed by Governor Perpich. There's no mention of a higher gasoline tax in the governor's new budget proposal. But the governor takes money that was intended for highway construction and uses it for other purposes. He's told the Transportation Department to find another source for those funds. And the number one option is a higher tax on gasoline. Minnesota's gas tax is now 17 cents a gallon, fifth highest in the nation. It would take about a four cent per gallon increase in the tax to make up for the lost funding, which is supposed to come from the state excise tax you pay when you buy a car. The increase would put the gas tax at 21 cents a gallon, the highest of any state. The one option no one seems to be considering is a cut in funding for highway construction. The Transportation Department says nearly half of Minnesota's highways are past their normal life expectancy. And if anything, more money is needed. Any way you look at it, there's a $225 million gap in the governor's budget. A gap that's likely to be filled at the pump. Dennis Stauffer, News 11. Now, governor Perpich has asked the Transportation Department to draw up a list of possible options for him to review no later than March 1st. Coming up in sports, the North Stars are looking to extend their lead in the Norris Division. We'll tell you how they did. And in the Pro Bowl, Tommy Kramer and a couple of other Vikings tried to help the NFC. The key word there is try. Randy Shaver is up next. The Old Corner Drugstore. It's not what it used to be. See how you save in Snyder's Price Chopper Sale. Assorted formulas of Helsa shampoo and conditioner, only $1.50 with Price Chopper coupon. And after mail-in rebate, it's yours free. Price Chopper savings on the 100-count 500-milligram Healthright Time Release Vitamin C. Just $3.99 with coupon. Duracell Alkaline Batteries, regular to $2.79, but with coupon and rebate, just $0.49. Cents. Snyder's, the Old Corner Drugstore, for today. Ah, excuse me. Yes. Are you getting your money's worth when you dine out? Not often. Try the Embers 24 hours a day. Nowhere, even in the finest restaurants, will you find better food so reasonably priced. That looks delicious. And the Embers guarantees your complete satisfaction, or your meal will be cheerfully exchanged. I like that. Only the finest quality food at unbelievable prices, like our selection of dinners from $3.99. Say, I'm hungry. Isn't it time you remembered the embers for lunch or dinner, day or night? Pontiac. Announcing high-performance savings on every 1987 Pontiac. Buy or lease and get up to $1,200 cash back, depending on model and equipment. Just take actual retail delivery of the road machine you want from dealer stock by April 30th. And get up to $1,200 cash back. Plus, every 1987 Pontiac comes with a six-year, 60,000-mile warranty. We build excitement. Pontiac. There's an annual ritual at the St. Paul Winter Carnival, golfing in the snow at the Lost Spur Country Club in Egan. 
There were 183 participants today using colored balls with strings attached. And in this game, there's no putting. All you have to do is get the ball in the red circle on the green. Just get the ball. It's a little tougher than it looks. I would think it probably would be a little tougher than it looks maybe on the road for the North Stars. Tonight. Yeah, they haven't been playing too badly on the road. They've only lost once in their last 10 games, mm -hmm. and they're at Vancouver tonight. It's the last game of the road trip and hoping to come back home and... Hoping. Yeah, yeah. Hoping. Hoping, hoping, is, back home. hoping <laughs> is the key. Hoping is the key word on that one. The North Stars can move three points up on Detroit in the North Division with a win tonight at Vancouver. The Red Wings lost at Buffalo earlier this evening. So win, lose, or yes, even tie, the Stars will remain in first place in the North Division. But things aren't looking too good right now in Vancouver. The Stars are trailing the Canucks. The score is two to zero. As I said, the Detroit Red Wings got beat by Buffalo tonight. The Sabres led 1-0 when Dave Andrachuk got his 16th of the year on the power play. It turned out to be the game winner. Jacques Demers, the Detroit coach, really lost his cool after the goal. He threw his glasses. A minor penalty was assessed to Demers. Detroit loses the game anyway. The final was 6-1. to one. As we go to the scoreboard, Chicago beat Edmonton. Troy Murray got the game winner. Washington over Winnipeg. Pierre LaRouche got the hat trick for the Rangers. Quebec beat Los Angeles and Pittsburgh. Loses to Hartford 8-6. Mario Lemieux, however, did get a pair of goals for the Penguins. The 1986 NFL season ended on a sloppy note today in Hawaii as the AFC beat the NFC in a yawner, 10-6. I mean, this is the best football players in the world, and the final score was 10-6. The Vikings had three players on the NFC squad. Tight end Steve Jordan, who did not catch a pass. Joey Bronner at safety. And starting quarterback Tommy Kramer. TK played the first and third quarters, completing eight passes for 73 yards, no touchdowns, and no interceptions. Some smart aleck at Aloha Stadium just had to rub it in. Yeah, 86 degree wind chill. Yeah, right, pal. Okay. Tommy Kramer on his first pass of the day. Not a pretty one, but he completed it anyway. In fact, he completed his first three of the game. He was the only quarterback in the game to throw over 50%. Later, after the first of three fumbles by Vi Sikahima of the St. Louis Cardinals, Denver's John Elway and a touchdown pass to Todd Christensen. 7 0 AFC, and well, they went on to win it from there. The NFC behind Washington quarterback Jay Schrader drove deep inside the AFC territory, but he throws an interception and the AFC wins the game 10-6 over the NFC. The AFC players got $10,000 for winning a piece. The NFC players got five grand. North Carolina is out. More than likely, Nevada Las Vegas will be in as the nation's top-ranked college basketball team next week. That's because the Tar Heels, ranked number one, lost an unranked Notre Dame today. They were in front early and in command. Jeff Lebo with a three-pointer. North Carolina looked good, but the second half turned into the David Rivers show. Scored all 14 of his points in the second half. Notre Dame ran off a string of points to start the final 20 minutes. Rivers was the instigator. Watch him hit the jumper here late in the game to put the Irish ahead 56 to 55. Lebo had a chance to tie it up with a desperation three-pointer for North Carolina. It doesn't fall. We go to the scoreboard, the final 60-58. Nevada Las Vegas cruises. They should be number one next week. The running Rebels were led by Freddie Banks on the steal for two of his career-high 36 points. As we go to the videotape, here's Banks on the steal. Watch him go. The running Rebels will be number one next week. Gopher women's basketball team slid back into their losing ways this afternoon, dropping their eighth Big Ten game of the season to Michigan State, final 70-64. The Gophers had their moments. In fact, they led through most of the game. Debbie Hilmerson had a career-high 17. Molly Tadich added 17. And junior center Diane Kenny had 14 points and nine rebounds, but it wasn't enough. The Spartans' Kim Archer coming up on the drive down the lane. She scored an eventual three-point play. The Gophers lose 70-64. They're now tied for ninth place in the Big Ten with Michigan with a record of 1-8. and eight. A name from the past won the Pebble Beach Pro-Am Golf Tournament today in Monterey, California. Johnny Miller, remember him, shot a sixth under par 66 to win by a stroke over Payne Stewart. It's Miller's first win on the tour since 1983. Miller canned this long birdie putt at 18, his third birdie in the final five holes, and he was tied for the lead with Stewart at 10 under par. Stewart bogeyed 17, then missed the birdie putt to tie at 18. Miller wins $108,000 at the Pebble Beach Pro-Am. By the way, Edina's Chris Perry shot a 71.